Um, and I, before we jump into asking Chris questions, I want to welcome everyone. And my name is Carolyn Smith. I know a lot of faces, so it's fun to see all of you for me too. Um, but I'm working with alumni relations now and um, just kind of some background on what we've been doing. Last spring, we did a survey to all alumni with kind of hopes to improve the Bronco alumni experience. And part of that, when we asked, was getting some open-ended questions about who made a special impact on your experience as a student. And so we've invited some of those folks to join us on what we call campus chats, um, just to relive some memories, maybe get some words of wisdom, that kind of thing. So we know that you all want to talk with each other and talk with Chris, so we'll give you a chance to do that, but we are planning to make this kind of informal. So if you need to jump off for a minute and jump back on, you're certainly welcome to do that. I would just ask that you put yourselves on mute if you're not speaking and we'll let you get off of mute um, in a little bit here as well. So I am guessing that most of you don't need an introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. So this is Chris Sly, of course, and Chris has served as the director for the Office of Student Engagement, advisor for the Western Student Association and adjunct professor since 2007. Before that, he worked in Res Life as a hall director starting in 2000. And he currently provides leadership for student organizations, fraternity and sorority life, the student media group, leadership development, and large campus programs like Homecoming and Bronco Bash. He is looking to join all of us as Bronco alumni as he is currently pursuing a PhD in educational leadership. And I know that uh, Chris has never been one, I think, to really want to be on center stage. He tends to give those opportunities to staff and students, but we know that he's made a significant impact on many lives. So we are going to make him center stage today. So thank you, Chris, for being here. And thanks to all of you um, for joining us today. I have a ton of questions, but we also had some questions submitted, and I'm guessing some of you will have some questions. So before we let you do that, I'm going to make Chris talk about work a little bit, and then we'll get to more fun stuff. So my first question for you, just because it's on everyone's mind, is that the pandemic has obviously had a significant impact on all of us and the work we do. So how has that impacted you, yourself, and then also the Office of Student Engagement and students in general. Yeah, thanks for your comment and those that will watch us in the future. Hello, um, this is this has been really been a nice treat. And so um, just really appreciate to see all these faces from all different periods of my career at Western. Um, it just it feels like it's been a flash, but yeah, it feels like it's been a long time too, so which is good. So, um, but yeah, COVID has been, it's been rough. Um, it is, it's been hard. Um, uh, in terms of really trying to pivot and find a, a groove or a space in that. And so um, uh, we really spent, um, you know, university had some tough decisions to make. And so as they went through that, um, we were like, okay, here's where we're at. Here's who we've got on the, at the table. And so, you know, from July on, we were like, how do we create an experience virtually safely um, that we've never done before? And so, um, I've got a really great team and some of them even came here today. So thank you for that. But um, yeah, I think that's really what it was about was really digging in on your mission. And so I think that's a really good leadership lesson um, is really, um, I really wanted to make sure that COVID doesn't define us, um, that pre-COVID, post-COVID, during COVID, whatever, um, that we still had our same mission and, and that was really to make the students' lives better. And so, um, um, it was really a good opportunity to um, what I call emote and move. So even in that frustration or, you know, the, the high points, the low points, to be able to name that. Um, we, I myself did a lot of emotional labor, um, but to keep moving, you know, to um, we got to keep showing up because students are in a really tough spot, too. Um, it's not easy for them. And so um, and really um, 
um, Colleen, who's on the call, even said it well today um, of just really making sure that you're available and making space um, for yourself and for others. And so, um, yeah, that's on the work side. Uh, personally, um, it's been really great. To, my wife, who also works at Western and is a, a two-time alum, um, has really been great. We've got two little boys, so they might pop in the door there or whatever, but uh, nine and five and doing virtual school with them um, has been uh, has been a challenge as well, but they're, they're starting to get it as well. And so I think of that, of the now the metaphor of like getting your sea legs like it's taken a little bit, but I think we're fi we're finally starting to get there. So it, it's been really good. It's been great to have a, a great team um, to be able to move that forward. And I guess similarly to that, and I, I don't want to spend too much time here because we want this to be fun, but there was a question sent in by one of the um, registrants too. And that was, of course, this summer also kind of brought a shift to the way we talk about racism and social justice and not just at Western, but across the country. Um, so one of the questions in the registered was how are you and the student engagement staff helping student organizations as they address and manage the convergence of the racial, economic and health pandemic? Yeah, I think that's been a good, that's a really, Good question. And so in that is, um, from the student perspective, what I've observed of that is that they're grieving, that they've something has been taken away from them. And so whether that be graduation from your high school and senior year, or, you know, you're a college student on the campus, and then abruptly, you know, things shifted in March. And then, you know, um, there was just a lot of unknown in terms of what would fall look like. And, um, you know, I think it's a mixed bag from what I'm hearing. Some students have adjusted to the fall and, and some just like this isn't, it wasn't quite the experience that they remember. And so um, I think to the best of our ability, we've tried to give, create spaces for students to, to let them grieve, you know, the loss of, of, you know, of different things. And then, yeah, with the social justice piece, um, generationally, I'm seeing it of like activism looks very different now. And I think as a university administrators, we have to give space for that too, um, to, to let students voice that frustration and, and raise those tough questions. Um, I, I think that that's really important for them to, um, as they make sense of the world of, you know, what's going on, you know, um, the election as well, you know, you can talk a little bit about that. So there's just a lot going on. And so, you know, you take one of those things in any year, that would be a lot, but to put, you know, three or four or five different types of things on there. Um, and, you know, your personal health and safety of, I've heard a lot of students, you know, contracted the virus and are they frustrated with the university or, or whatever, you know, there's just a lot to wrestle with. And so, you know, I love that question and I, you know, is in terms of using this platform of like, let's talk about it. Like, you know, as a university, we did some things right. You know, as a university, if we had a chance to do it again, we probably would do it differently. Like, that's just like, let's just be real about it. And so, um, yeah. So on the student side of it, you know, keeping it closer to work is, um, yeah, like letting the students do that emotional labor, name those emotions that they're frustrated with, um, give them that space um, to, um, to, to use their voice. And, and again, ask those tough questions and, um, you know, we as, as a, a university administrators, can we can we respond to that? So yeah, thanks for that. That's great. Lots going on, that's for sure. Um, but skipping over to, I mean, we're still going to stay Western related, but more personal than work stuff. So one of the reasons that we wanted to invite everyone on was so that they could reconnect with you personally. Um, and I know you have a lot of memories, you must have a lot of memories. So if you are willing to go back a little bit and tell us how you ended up at Western in the first place, that would be great. Yeah, I, I, I was a uh, RA um, at a school to the north of us. And so um, I did a uh, traditional student affairs background kind of thing. So um, a lot of leadership development and things like that through the RA position and RHA. I see some RHA heads from uh, WMU here on the call. So, yep, I, I still uh, have a, a heart that bleeds for, for RHA as well. And so um, it's Residence Housing Association. But the um, so I did my grad work um, at Ball State University and then um, right out of grad school, I, again, in that traditional student affairs, I was I knew I wanted to work in housing. Um, it was a great opportunity to uh, work with students and um, 
have really had some great RA teams over the years. And so um, in that Western, um, uh, I grew up in Michigan, as, as folks know, but it's really kind of a secret for the state. And so, you know, I didn't really come to Kalamazoo a lot before that. But as soon as I really interviewed and connected with folks, um, I really love the community. I still love the community. Obviously, I'm still here. And so, um, um, yeah, just there's a grittiness about Western students that I think, you know, hopefully you all can resonate with that of, you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we show up uh and you know in terms of strengths like there's a lot of us that have achiever I, um and um just you show up and you, and you and you get to work and so um that is really what has kept me at western um is the student body i know it sounds cliche but hopefully i added some more context and depth to it but yeah right out of uh grad school um started working in housing and um there's some uh, really good friends that uh, were hall directors that i still keep in touch with that, that don't work here anymore but um, it was really a good kind of onboarding um, for me. Um, it just began to grow roots. And so, I'm, you know, 20 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> I was going to say, a 20 year pin for those of you who weren't on earlier. He just, just got the 20 year pin, right? That's awesome. Um, are you, what would you say when you think back to everything you've done? What are you most proud of? about your time here? You know, it, it's, I thought a little bit about that, wondering if that question would be asked. And um, there's not really a key like individual moment that I really can draw back to, um, but it's, it's corny and it's cliche and hopefully I can explain it well enough. But um, I saw it more in my role with WSA was the those students were really driven and really wanted to create like a, a legacy. They wanted to leave a legacy. And so, you know, even as I, I'm looking at Jenny uh, Steiner right now of like, you know, yeah, I still remember kicking the old school. That was a really cool logo. Like, so wanting to just leave your mark on the university. And so I think there's a lot of students that wanted to do that, you know, and so, you know, um, you know, Jasmine is speaker, like, you know, just, I still remember some of those things. Like you just, you really wanted to leave your mark. And so, um, so in that, I think, over as I reflected on that is it's really kind of a living legacy. And so just to see, you know, when I posted on Facebook and seeing so many people here on the call now, um, it's just really, really neat of like, that's, it's, I'm really proud of you all, you know, um, a lot of, um, um, it's both and I guess of those that, you know, wanted to do the higher ed thing and are still in higher ed, you know, and those that left, that's fine. It's, it's no big deal in that, but, um, it's you're still doing leadership and so and still being involved in your communities and different things like that and so that part never left you and i would hope to uh think that i'm still a part of that that i was part of that push um you know i think you know a lot of you know chris pradle um and so the things that he's done um you know for this community you know um it's it's just it's it's great that he i know that he would kind of bounce back and give me some credit for you know for helping him get started, um, you know, in his undergraduate career. So babbled a little bit, sorry, gushing a little bit, but yeah, it, it really is living legacies, you know, would really be all of you. So it's really been neat. We're good with babble, <laughs> not babbling anyway. So I think probably a lot of these folks are here because they feel that you did leave that mark on them. So um, I, I'm going to ask you a more fun one. And I, I plan mm -hmm. events, obviously. I worked in SELP when it was SELP. I know that events set you up for some fantastic stories. Like events are just all about stories is my thing. So um, do you have any really memorable moments at Western that you're allowed to share with us? And then we'll ask you Todd's question if you have any that you're not supposed to tell us? Yeah, I think I, I, I think I can, I have a PG-13 version of that that I think will be appropriate. And so, um, but on the, uh, on the events, um, there's, um, I think you all know, right? If you haven't been to a Bronco hockey game, you need to go to a Bronco hockey game. Um, and so there's that. And then um, just the band, you know, the marching band, um, 
And so having the band at Bronco Bash, like if it's a nice weather, we know about the rain stories, we can talk about that and stuff like that. Right, right, Kendra, I think you're you're out there. So we can talk about the rain and stuff like that. But on the on the Bronco Bash days when it's good weather and the band strikes up and it just like that is the official start of the school year for me. And I, I think for a lot of folks and it just is uh, I love that. And so the special behind the scenes memory is, is that those students that, uh, you know, that plan that we, um, we've been able to sneak them up on the roof of the Bernhardt Center. Um, and so they're able to see all of Bronco Bash, the sea of, of folks. And so um, it's really interesting, obviously, I don't want to go too far back to COVID, but, you know, not having some of those moments, like being able again to grieve that. But yeah, those were really the special moments of being able to sneak the students up on the, the student coordinators up on the roof and letting them see the elements of their, uh, the results of their, their hard work. I did not know that one. That is pretty cool. <laughs> Right, the secret's out, now. out now. Yeah, we used to sneak them. I hope I, uh, um, I know I see Jeffrey Weinfeld on the call. So uh, thanks for coming. But I, I hope there's no, uh, we, we kept it safe. So we stay away from the edges and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, yes. Trusty Reinfeld comes to a lot of our events. He's pretty fun, though. So um, I won't ask you right now to uh, share any stories you're not supposed to share with us. We'll save that for when we're not recording. How about that? <laughs> if you ask me, I'll tell you. Yeah, I got, I got some some PG thirteen and some stories we'll, on. That. <laughs> we'll let Todd uh, bother you with that. <laughs> you mentioned Chris Pradel, and I I saw that you all have uh, been doing some online events similar to this yourselves. One was a then and now series. Is that right? Yes. Yes. But I wondered if you. Uh, you asked them a question and I wanted to give you the same question, which because we all know you for your leadership style, right? So one of the questions you asked them was, how do you navigate difficult and uncertain times as a leader? Yeah, I touched on it a, a little bit is I really try to make sure that the moment doesn't define you and that um, this the, uh, the same approach or, you know, characteristically to it, you know, I would try and take that, you know, regardless. And so in that, what I mean by that is, um, I think folks resonate with me because of my um, authenticity, um, my ability to, you know, to be transparent and just to say it, say it how it is. And so um, I think in that, like, we, yeah, again, we talked about that this morning in our staff meeting is really focusing on our why um, I think that's really, really important. And so for the institution, it's really about the mission. And so when you're going through tough times, you really got to stick to the mission. And so with Western being around, you know, um, you know, since 1903. And so it, it's been through some good times and some bad times, obviously, but it, it stays because of the mission and, you know, and obviously the people as well. But when we can get focused on our why, um, I think that's where uh, you'll have a better chance at success. And so um, that's what I try to, I try to role model that and lead that um, and then try to encourage um, and inspire others of that to remember their why, why they show up, why they get out of the bed in the morning. Um, um, and it is just to make a difference, just to make an impact. Um, and so um, regardless of the situation that you're currently looking at, you still have an opportunity to make an impact on people. And so a positive one, obviously. And so. Um, you do the best that you can and um, you, you, you keep moving. Can I, I'm gonna ask one more question and then I'll let the rest of you, if you have anything you'd like to ask or say, and I can bombard you with more. I literally have like 20 other questions that I would love to get your input on, but here's one just for the alumni. Can you think of anything that these guys would all be surprised to learn about you? Yeah, that was a tough one. I, I'm a pretty open book. And so I'm sure they have tons of stories on me. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of, uh, yeah, it's, I'm a pretty open book. So I'm not quite sure if there's anything that, um, that I do. I, I, um, I don't know, some of you might know this. I, I um, I'm a singer, and so I'm singing in uh, my church choir, and um, I've, um, you know, done some 
semi-professional types of things, nothing paid, no paid gigs. So, but um, um, that might be the closest is that, that folks might not know about me, so. I did not know that. We right. won't make you sing. Yeah, okay. not, I, I won't sing the, uh, <laughs> the alma mater. Please don't make me sing the alma mater. <laughs> Well, I would have the same answer to that question too. The ambassadors used to ask me that and I was like, I have nothing. I tell you all everything. So it's okay. Um, so at that, or with that, I should say, hopefully we sparked some memories for all of you. And I will ask more questions if you don't have any, but if anyone has any thoughts or questions that you would like to put in the chat or that you would just like to ask, you are welcome to do that. Or if you just want to chat for a minute, that's okay too. I'll give it a second and then I'll ask you about Buster Brown. I'll just chime in and say, I have like all the warm fuzzies right now, like hearing about um, everything, Chris. And you, like, I think honestly, like I, I'm just so thankful for you, the way that you are a leader. Like I think in terms of um, just your, like, yeah, your candor of like, this is who I am and like, and, and really being, um, like I think about that now where I like, when I worked the front desk in self and worked, I mean, I worked with you on like everything. I feel like for like <laughs> my last three years at Western, I was just, we were just together all the time. And, um, and thinking back, I'm like, Chris was a director and here I was an undergraduate and, and you were in really serious conversations. You were doing really important work and you were, um, just able to laugh and have fun. And I think that's something that I think about bringing forward into my work as a professional that if you can't have fun with the work, you know, or, or really connect with students in a really meaningful way, then, then, um, yeah, then maybe maybe that's not the place for you for the for that role. But I, I think, yeah, so I think that's something I've really carried with me of of um never feeling like even though you were you held this position of power and we looked up to you and saw you as this super important person that you are just the humility that you bring to your leadership and the um yeah, just like just your overall you're just a lovely person, obviously. I <laughs> I could gush, but I think, yeah, I think it's it's just to hear your reflections are, are, it's really bringing me back to sitting at that little L-shaped desk at, and, in the bird cage with the, with the uh, easy button. Um, I don't know if you still have that, but just like really thinking about, um, yeah, I'm like, I'm like really being taken aback. Like, I just remembered as you were talking about students and sorry, I'll, I'll get off in a sec, but um, how, when I was on WSA, um, and we brought back the, um, the what is it, the soapbox car race. Um, and we built the Dunner for WSA. And then we, we rolled it back to the birdcage and put it in Chris's office as like a prank. Um, and yeah, so I just, I don't know. I think <laughs> it, it just was like this special, special relationship that we, um, had with you and I'm so appreciative of it. So that's not really a question, but it's just great to be back in community with you. And maybe that means I need to just connect with you offline uh, soon. <laughs> no, thanks for that. Yeah. I, um, yeah, those, I forgot about the Dunner being in my office, that prank, but yes, yep. Yeah, just being, but being real and authentic in that to give you all like the students like that space and so you know I appreciate as you say that of like yeah we know he came from a tough meeting sometimes it's written on his face um but then be able like for me I know I needed to shift quickly because it's not fair to you all to be like just be you know just mad you know or different things like that so being able to, to be able to shift in that and so um yeah to be able to be present to be in the moment um and I think that's um I thank you for acknowledging that. And so uh, it's neat on the uh, uh, Josh Coner, for those that remember him on the WSA side, that we still do the slow clap. And so whenever, um, so for those of you that were, Ty, I see you there. And so uh, 
yeah, just some of those traditions, those smaller ones, I love that. And Jenny, for you was, you introduced Navy to um, as color for, for WSA. And so it's neat to see that over these years, it's it's still, Navy is still still around and, you know, as cab, for the cabbies that are on here that, um, you know, with that red, like they really just kind of cut through and it's, it's really cool to see. You know, remember those scarves you ordered? <laughs> so it was, that, that was really, it was really cool, so, yeah. I love that. I'm gonna put Jenny in charge of ordering swag for us. She was pretty good. <laughs> pretty good at that. The swag was nice. So, uh, the the slow clap. So the WSA does a lot of appointments and confirmations, and you know, whenever there was something that was passed, um, you do a slow clap, and then like build it up. So the person that was usually in the hallway, and so that if you timed it right, they'd hear the clapping first as they walked in. So it was a really great way to kind of show that people could. Um, you know, that you, you ran for something and you got it. And so the, we were, for years, um, we're still pretty big, the largest student Senate in the state, uh, student government, the largest student government in the state of Michigan. And so to have, you know, 60 to sometimes 100 of your peers, you know, doing a slow clap, it was really kind of a cool, cool moment. Uh, I have a question. Sorry to cut you off there. Or you're about to say something. No, go ahead. Um, so I, when I think back to some of my earlier, early interactions uh, with Chris, it was um, observing, observing him interact with some of his peers. So Chris was a hall director when I went to Western or when I started at Western um, and Chris, Chris Wheeler, was that my hall director? Yes. So just watching the two of you like play off of one another um, and then seeing that progress throughout the years of your relationships with other staff members at the university. I mean, it really set the tone in terms of how I wanted to interact with some of my colleagues when I became a professional in higher education. Um, and so definitely finding those people was really important. Uh, we're now at a point where it's absolutely challenging. And so to get to a question, I'm curious how you help cultivate like those relationships with your staff, uh, with other colleagues from across campus. Uh, how are you able to do that? Like it's it's tough. I, I mean, we are actually. I work at a university in Texas, and our institution is actually having faculty, staff, and students on, on campus. Although there are, is um, online courses and everything, but as professionals, we're we're here for the most part. So, um, but even still, it's definitely challenging. So I'm wondering if you have some insights or some recommendations and suggestions on how we can do that, whether we work in higher ed or elsewhere. Yeah, Reed, thanks for that. It's good to see you, by the way. And uh, yeah, I love that question. That's a really good one. I, um, yeah, I was thinking about Chris, you mentioned Chris Wheeler, and then uh, I don't know, or Dewan, and I know Michelle, now that brings Michelle uh, into the picture a little bit, Dewan and Ali um, and Randy Ott. So yeah, like those, those were my guys. And so we still keep up a little bit here and there. And so, um, but yeah, as a young, looking back, like as a young professional, like I didn't know any different, but like the ability to have like you know, Brene Brown now, like she's written books about it. She calls it the square squad. And so, you know, at that time, those guys were on my square squad and that you can just come to them and trust them and like the secret, you know, what's said in Vegas kind of thing, like the Vegas rule. And so really being able to know time and place. And I think young professionals need to really understand that time and place of, you know, there's times where you can hang out with students, but there's, there, you need your own separate space you know for that um it helps with your own professional maturation and um it just it's, there's a lot it's just it's smarter it's just it's just safer to do that and so i think in that of um yeah as Brene, you know kind of leaning on her i you know like you need your square squad like you need your folks that you know are going to be in your corner and so um if it's your work colleagues that's great that's it's an added bonus um but in that the second element to that question that I think about Reed is I knew in housing and I see it in Greek life, I see it um, a little bit in orientation, like you can create your own little bubble um, and you can thrive in that bubble, but it's really important to get outside of that bubble. The university is so big and there's, you know, I've connected with you all from all different parts of campus. Like, um, 
it's really important to make those connections. And so again, as a younger professional or a mid-level professional, even a senior level, like you need to continue to get out of that bubble um, in that, you know, if you're, um, yeah, you just need to continue to do that. And so whether it's, you know, volunteering um, on different projects and committees, different things like that, there's different ways to do it. But um, out of that, um, there's just natural people that you'll connect with and you'll be able to kind of do some social activities and things like that. Find other things that you have in common outside of work. Um, that's another thing that it helped me as I moved into um, kind of like a mid mid career kind of thing is if I took work away from this, would we have anything in common to be able to talk about? And if it was yes, then great, I wanna pour more into that. But if it's no, like you're a cool person, but like, if we're just always talking about work, you know, in a social setting, like I sometimes need a break from that too. And you probably do as well. And so if we're always talking about work um, and there's nothing else to fill that, then it's like, yeah, like it, there's probably um, an opportunity to uh, reevaluate that relationship or be able to set a stronger boundary of like, we cannot just talk work all the time. So, um, I don't know, Reed, does that, does that resonate? Does that, does that answer? This is a really good question. I hope I, I got there. So it's a tough oh, thing. No, absolutely. no I was going to say, absolutely. It's, uh, um, I, I, prov I was taking notes because actually, you know, it's a question I was really curious about. Um, it's, uh, yeah, things have obviously been difficult and challenging. And I look to folks who I've seen do it throughout the years of, you know, what's working and what isn't. So I appreciate the feedback that you provided. And I, I've, I, um, I found an opportunity to profession, like do it professionally. And so um, I'm a co-facilitator for the Academic Leadership Academy. And um, I love that. Um, it's uh, Thursdays typically. And um, it's a cohort of about 10 to 12 people from all over campus, uh, faculty and staff. And so it's, um, we're able to kind of create a space where, um, you know, we can just, it's like-minded people people that are moving in the same direction, um, that want best for the university, want best, you know, for their careers and different things like that, looking for the best way to impact students' lives. And um, it's just, a, it's a really um, great group of people. Um, and you're able to, again, to expand your own uh, personal networks off of that. But, um, you know, if there's different learning communities, um, you know, Western has one that's um, um, around the uh, diversity, uh, equity and inclusion. So some of those professional development opportunities that are offered at, at universities, um, those are great ways to uh, continue to expand your own uh, personal network too. And I had to write down the square squad because now I have to go look that up. <laughs> Which I should have done already. I should know Brene Brown a little better than I do. But yeah, Brene uh, Brown, great. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. I just kind of um, going along with that. One of the questions that came in from someone who registered was, "What one thing that you hope that students take away from their leadership experience at Western?" Oh wow. Um... I think the thing that quickly comes to mind is um, there's a pretty popular TED talk uh, about the lollipop moments. And so um, I can put it in the chat um, if folks want to pull that up or whatever. But the um, it quickly, it's basically just that little random, small random act of kindness. You, you have no idea where that will go. And so if you drop a rock and it creates a ripple, you can't you can control the rock where you drop it. But that ripple, you, you have no control over the ripple. And so just those small acts of kindness, um, um, for those of you that know Erin Kaplan, um, she teases me for years now over the lollipop. She goes, do you remember the first time we met? I'm like, Erin, no, I'm sorry. I do not remember the first time that we, we, we met. And so she was like, it was a Halloween related type thing at an event. And I'm like, I, I you can tell me all about it. I still don't remember it. <laughs> and so, um, but she's like, you said something to me in that space that changed the trajectory of my career. And so um, thanks uh, Colleen for dropping that in there. And so in that, um, yeah, you just don't know. And so um, I've had 
over the years, so many students come back with like basically lollipop moments of like, you told me to go do such and such. And I thought you were crazy, but then I went ahead and did it and it worked. And I was like, well, probably because I've done it before, but it was, uh, I'm glad that you tried it. And I'm glad that it worked or, you know, but I'm like, I forgot that. And so um, it's, it's been really neat to, to see that. So yeah, I think that's, that's really what it's about is you, you just never know um, the impact that you can have on somebody, the, the power of the, the shoulder tap, so to speak. Yeah, I have to ask if Erin is the one who was who couldn't come because she emailed me. She was so excited to be here. So. Yeah, she really wanted to be here, and she sent me a text, and she's a little distraught. But hopefully, she can she can rewatch it, and she can now she can be embarrassed <laughs> and <laughs> when she because there's a lot of folks on this call that know her, and so uh, she can be. <laughs> So, but well, I, I can think of some Erin Kaplan stories myself. Yeah, exactly. A lot of us I probably share them. <laughs> we love her. We do. We do. <laughs> oh, so here's a fun one that came in. What is your favorite thing about Western besides the obvious, which apparently is old Buster Bronco? Yeah, I'm definitely sorry. I'm old. I'm, I'm team old Buster on that. So, um, <laughs> but I'm glad that he got his. Uh, is uh he got fit you know he got he got his workout on so but um <laughs> the um yeah i mentioned a couple of them like western hockey like is just you know year after year it's one of the toughest places to play um and you know in terms of road teams coming in to kalamazoo um i love that for you know since the time that I've been here is we can skate with anybody in the country. You know, if Western were to get a national championship, it's probably, you know, I hope I'm not, again, you ask me, I'm going to tell you, but it's probably going to be through hockey. And so just consistently um, they can uh, re up, you know, they do a great, great job of that over the years. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm a sport guy. So I play a lot of sports. Um, I love the bracket buster for those that remember that going back where, um, the refs were calling a horrible game, you know, and so um, but basically the bracket buster was what were the mid-major teams that might be able to uh, make some noise in the in the tournament. And so they did some flex scheduling. And so we um, uh, we hosted that game. And so it was packed. It was loud. Um, the um, it was a buzzer beater to win the game. And so I just, I still am getting goosebumps now. The ball is in the air and the crowd is quiet, like just wishing for the shot to go in. It goes in and it just, it's not. So it was just, a, it was a great, you know, just again, this moment where you're just connecting with, with Broncos, with people. So yeah, those, a lot of them go back to sports. Um, some fun times too. Um, cabbies taking the trips to, to NACA. Um, so a lot of road trips. So um, those moments are fun too. Um, more recently, um, I'm an outdoors person, but I realize like backpacking is is a whole nother level. <laughs> and so I'm um, doing the yeah, Colleen looking at you. Yep. In terms of the uh, we went on, on a trip up to uh, took a staff trip up to uh, Lake Superior. And if it wasn't the mosquitoes, it was the flies. And so I was just I uh, they called me. Um, Oh man, what was that? That uh, Deet, yeah, Mr. Deet. So I just bathed in bug spray, and so, uh, <laughs> so. But in that, it was just neat. Those moments of you know just getting out, you know, getting out of town and, and road tripping is a lot, a lot of fun. Chris, you mentioned sports. Are you still playing uh, intramural football against the uh, students? No, you know, I had to hang that up. You know, the phone stopped ringing there, Todd. But yeah, I used to do that as a hall director. I'm in a little bit into. Um, Hey, we had a pretty good team back in the day until, you know, one of the hall directors broke her leg. But other than that, it was good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, that actually does surprise students. They're like, wait, you like, no, I'm I'm a, uh, I'm a pretty good offensive lineman. I'm skinny, but I'm quick. So, you know, you can't. Uh, but yeah, we. Um, yeah, I forgot about thanks, Todd. I forgot about that. Yeah, we would um, sometimes it'd be all staff teams and sometimes it'd be teams that I would play with students. But. Um, as a hall director, um, especially earlier on, because the students were first year students and they they had played football, but the rules are just a little bit different in terms of flag football. And so I would kind of coach them and be a player coach with them. And um, there were definitely some, uh, uh, the, the, the championship game was played in Waldo. And so being able to, uh, uh, that was a fun moment to playing under the lights. Um, so I, I did make a couple times to the uh, championship stage. So, and then uh, we do some soccer 
and then um, a little bit of dodgeball. So, yeah. I would remember Dave Parrott would come into my office. Yep. And he was a huge flag put, like, to the national finals in New Orleans. He'd be like, how'd your team do this week? I'm like, we, we did all right, right? You know, we, we won, we lost. And he's like, here, you need to run these three plays. He'd scope it. I'm like, I, here I am thinking we're going to talk about something important. And he's like, you need to run these and then report back. I'm like, all right. Yeah, good times. Yeah, Dave was great with What that. about volleyball? Oh, do you volleyball. still do volleyball, Chris? That's right. Yeah, that's right, Katie. Thank you. Yeah, I did that um, with you all. And then um, Katie was a grad in our office. And then um, I did that in my hall director days, too. And so um, I forgot about that. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, volleyball was another one that um, was a lot of fun. So I think Katie remembers my more competitive side of the volleyball side. Though. And so <laughs> yep, for sure. <laughs> All right, so there's a memory in the chat about you and the Razor Scooter in Henry Hall. Oh my gosh, who said that? Valerie. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh, Valerie. <laughs> so on that then, the, um, yeah, wow, that's taking me back. So SALP at the time, Student Activity Leadership Programs was in fonts. Um, but we were getting ready to move into the Bernhardt Center. And so, but I lived on campus. My wife was a hall director in Henry. And so it was a lot for me to, because if you got the walk to the parking lot, get in your car, drive around Ring Road to park over at Fonts and walk in, it was just too far. So I was like, it just was better to just walk. And so, um, you know, up through the flagpoles, up, you know, walk, it's much, much quicker. But there were times where if I forgot something at home or I just needed to get home for lunch or something like that, that two or three times in a day back and forth, so six trips was just too much. And so um, construction was delayed on the and moving into the new the, into the student center. And so I got a razor scooter. And so here I am in like dressed in suit and tie, you know, shirt and tie for meetings on a razor scooter trying to get to the next meeting and stuff like that. So students would would tease me a little bit, but it was just the quickest way to get from point A to point B. <laughs> That's funny. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> I feel like that's a good time to ask you Scott's or Todd's question about um, any stories that you were not allowed to tell students, but that maybe oh, you're willing to share now. Was that what you asked, Todd, right? Yeah, yeah, of all the stories that you have locked in the box, right? Are there any that, that the time has passed and you can you can bring those out and maybe share a little bit now? Maybe, oh, maybe, maybe tricks you've played on other staff or hall directors or, you know, maybe things that uh, you may have done over the years or helped others to do. Oh man, I... Um... I was, I think I was a pretty good young professional. I, I wasn't as, uh, as dastardly on some of those things. We were, I mean, again, you all know me, like I'm a nerd. And so um, one of the moments that some of you don't know about would be um, <laughs> we formed our own um, boy band. And so as I talked about, uh, we call ourselves K-Town. And so we were our own kind of boy band. And so we, uh, we didn't sing or perform or anything, but just that was kind of the name of our squad. So we were just kind of corny and nerdy in that. I don't think a lot of people knew about that. We wrote, uh, <laughs> we wrote um, a poem um, about when we would go out to uh, bars where college students were, weren't at because we were all single then. So I'll stop there and leave that at the PG uh, level there. But yeah, it was, other than that, um, yeah, the other one that the hall director story that I had more on the work side was students just they really thought that they could get away with smoking weed on campus. And so, you know, I, I see Michelle there and, and other yeah, Stephanie, like, yep, those that worked in housing like uh, Autumn, there you are. And so, yeah, it just there was no way. So the best one that almost got away was um, it, the thing that got him in trouble was it was around Thanksgiving break. So there weren't a lot of students around, but it's like, we could smell the weed on the floor. And um, I'm looking at Carolyn to make sure I'll keep it safe. But in that was <laughs> the, um, we really couldn't tell where it was coming from. We knew which side, but it was, it's it really drafty in, in Draper seat. So you really couldn't tell where it was coming from. And so um, 
we narrowed it down. So I wasn't a hundred percent sure. Um, so I knocked on the door and there was huge uh, rush of cold, cold air. The window was open. So that was the first like red flag, but I still didn't smell anything. And so, but it was really cold. So I'm talking to him and then again, now it's created this draft and uh, he had his shirt off and I'm like, and he's starting to shiver is that it was really that cold. Um, and I'm like, you're cold. Like, why don't you turn the fan? He had his fan on. I'm like, why don't you turn your fan off? So he turns the fan off and a lot of fabric, fabric dryer softener sheets fall from the fan. And then that I'm like, okay, you're, that's it. You're, you're, you're busted on that. And so, um, and then the smell started. So I'm like, it actually almost worked. And so I hope that, you know, for those students that, you know, are maybe finding this, like this is, it's, he still did, got, did not get away with it. But, um, and then he found a, he had a toilet paper roll and he lined that with fabric softener and he, that's where he exhaled it through. And so that was probably the most elaborate way um, that he, you know, that a student tried to get away with smoking weed in the residence hall, so. Oh, I love it. Yeah, thanks. That's a great story. <laughs> but don't worry when your kids get older and then they not hopefully you know, on the weed front, but there's all kinds of things that they try and pull and you're like, no, no, not only have I lived an exciting life, I've worked at a university, right? Like we've seen everything. Like nice try. Anyway. So. Yeah, I see Valerie in the chat. Yeah, they still try it. So yeah, it's, it is, uh, yeah, the, the, those are those are really interesting. But yeah, you're right. I, I think it's going to be harder for our kids, you know, because yeah, we've seen it and or tried it or <laughs> trial by error, different things like that. Yeah, it, it's tough. It's going to be tough on the kids. <laughs> oh, that's bad enough growing up with a teacher, a hall director. I think you're right. Would be a lot tougher. <laughs> I want to get to the, there were two other questions that people get sent in, and then I will just turn off the recording and let you all loose. But the first one was, how can we as alumni help the Office of Student Engagement or students in general at Western? Yeah, you know, in the typical fundraising way, you know, it's time, talent, and treasure. And so um, we definitely want to make sure that you know, we're trying our best to make sure that, you know, any dollars that are uh, donated, like really go into the students' pockets. And so we really tried to, um, it's, we're still figuring it out during COVID, but um, we use those dollars for conferences because as I've talked about, even some of the road trips and different things like that, like those opportunities um, for students um, um, have really been, um, really been impactful and so in that um but in this this is a yet another reminder of you know so many alums still wanting to be connected and so we do have like opportunities for um folks to be like judges for like um for the court process and stuff like that and so i, I this has been really encouraging of um uh, to be a little bit broader with that um with that call and so you know um we'll look for that on our if you're not following us on our facebook please please do that because um, this has been really um, good for me. I'm like, I'll, I'll usually kind of go through my mental Rolodex and things like that and try and spread it around and different things along that line. But um, there's a lot of you and this is great. And so um, there might be some good opportunities too to um, um, structure it in a way where um, you all from your, like if you're cabbies, like working, you know, talk, having a conversation with current cabbies and, you know, RHA or WSA folks, different things like that, trying to um, um, share. Cause sometimes they're like, yeah, Chris, we've, you're, you're <laughs> I'm like, fine, you don't believe me. Like you can, you can talk to the person that, you know, set, set these colors in motion, different things like that. So um, are there places, oops, I just saw a question. Are there other places outside Facebook to get info? Um, oh, somebody has deleted it. Yeah, I think in that, uh, Jenny, yeah, I think in that, I think you're right. This is an opportunity for us to, um, you know, kind of create an email listserv. And so I think that would be something that we could, um, if you all are interested, if I can see some nodding heads on that, that, you know, we won't flood your inbox with things. But I think in that, that might be another good way to kind of keep a connection and loop with, with things or what's going on and in ways that you can get involved. So. Um, yeah, again, this has been a really eye-opening experience. Like during COVID, like, you know, a lot of folks are still like, yeah, let's, let's, let's take this trip down memory lane. So 
yeah, I would, uh, I'll definitely look for, look to do that. We'll, we'll share the registration list with you so you have a start. <laughs> I, one last question for you, just so that you have a chance to kind of wrap up the conversation, but also because I think, I know that I always look to my mentors still um, for some advice about life. So any advice for these alumni and, or if, if you can't think of that, what are you telling your students and your staff right now? What advice are you giving them? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I think I go back to the why again, remember your why and um, the, um, when I have a good relationship with the students, I'm really able, um, the, you know, on the, sorry, on the higher ed theory side of it, you know, we talk about challenge and support. And so in that is um, the challenge side of it is, is that a lot of students, um, the, the expectations that they hold for themselves, like they begin to trip themselves up and they think that they're not succeeding. And so in that, trying to work with them on like, let's, let's reevaluate how you define success because especially with my current students I'm working with now, I'm like, y'all are crushing it. Like <laughs> you were doing a really, really good job. Like let's not get too frustrated that attendance isn't quite where you wanted it to be. But to the fact that you're able to move this program into a virtual space and, and I, I've been in, you know, and as, as us as hosts of virtual spaces, like sometimes we've had technical difficulties, but some of the things that these students are able to do and pretty quickly learning the technology of it is, is really phenomenal. And so, um, but you know, having them reevaluate their, with how they define success. And then um, the, um, yeah, that, that why um, a lot of times students, I talk a lot about burnout and I go, the best way to prevent burnout is not to burn out. And so recognizing those early warning signs um, because once you've burned out, like it, it takes a lot longer to come back. And so the best way is to not burn out. And so, um, yeah, students, we, we really talk about self-care um, because uh, a lot of times they'll just, just go and go and go. And I see that with younger professionals as well. Um, I think in the sense of, of the pandemic, like everything feels out of control. So we're trying to get something back under control. Um, and sometimes that helps and sometimes it doesn't. So. Um, but yeah, I think in that it's, uh, my faith is really important to me too. Um, good to see you, Michelle. Um, the, um, my faith is really important to me too. And so in that, I think we really need to make sure that we give grace to each other and to ourselves. Um, I think that's really, really important. Um, and that, um, yeah, again, that, that shoulder tap, like you just never know, like that kind word, um, how far that, how far that can go. So yeah, those would be kind of my rambling closing thoughts of words of, of, of advice. I think that's good advice for all of us. This, it's, you have to redefine success in this whole virtual world we're living in. So I, uh, for me, this was a success. This was the biggest group we had. So I, we're excited about this one. And I thank you for joining us. And uh, thanks to all of you alumni who jumped on to join us as well. I will uh, stop recording. So if people want to stick around and chat for a couple minutes, you are certainly welcome to do that. Um, and otherwise, I'll share our registration list with Chris. And uh, if anyone ever needs anything, Hardy and I both work with alumni relations. So you are certainly welcome to reach out to us at any time. But we are thankful that you're here and excited to reconnect with all of you too. So I'll stop recording now, just end with Go Broncos. <laughs>